Join, joining me at the head table today is Trustee Jim Evans. Jim, we're right. Jason Atkins. To my left, your right, Scott Ryan, co-author of the book, Maslin Against the World. Nate Moore, head football coach of Ohio High School Division II state champions, the Maslin Tigers. And husband, Rebecca Moore. Our guest speaker today, Becca Moore, what a bio she has. Becker, Becker is a co-author, along with Scott, uh, for the book called Maslin Against the World, two-time bestseller on Amazon. She's a four-time Boston Marathon finisher, two-time Ironman finisher, and a 75-mile ultra-marathon finisher. <laughs> the book, Maslin Against the World, uh, it's on sale if you'd like to purchase one in the back after the meeting. It's they're $20, cash or credit, and Becker and Nate and Scott will sign it for you. So after the meeting in the back, if you're interested, the book is on sale. <laughs> now, now to introduce our speaker, his head football coach for the Madison Tigers, Madison Tigers, Nate Moore. Thank you, and uh, thank you to the Hall of Fame Luncheon Club for having me, or for inviting me to introduce you to my wife, <laughs> Rebecca Moore. Yeah. You know, back when she was Rebecca Garber, I first really started to think seriously about this girl when on Fridays she would bring me homemade cookies <laughs> decorated with our school colors. It was that personal touch and attention to detail that made me think maybe this was the one for me. <laughs> Little did I know that both I and the great city of Maslin would be getting much more than well-timed baked goods. I'm amazed every day by Becca's commitment to her family, her commitment to her jobs as both special education coordinator and parent involvement coordinator, and her commitment to our football program and her players. Becca is the secret sauce. She is the little engine that could. She embodies the phrase, when you get knocked down, you get back up. She is a state championship coach who knows how to push athletes to achieve the unachievable. She supports our football program and players in ways that very few see but all Tiger fans appreciate. And she does it with beauty and she does it with grace. She's a marathoner, she's an Ironman, she's an author, she's an educator, she's also a prophet. Uh, in 2015, she was actually called on to introduce me as a new head football coach of the Maslin Tigers. And when she did that, uh, she predicted a state championship, believe it or not. And when we won it, last year, she had the nerve to say, what took you so long? <laughs> She's also a coach and a mother, and dare I say, she is the Paul Brown of coaches' wives. Ladies and gentlemen, Becca Moore. esteemed guests, the fans of the game of football, thank you to the Pro Football Hall of Fame Luncheon Club allowing me to come here to speak. Thank you to Maslin City Schools and our superintendent Paul Salvino and the Maslin Booster Club who I continue to drive crazy at times just being me. And thank you to my love, <laughs> undoubtedly probably the most important room person in the room and in my life, Coach Nathaniel Moore. Persistence is the key to my life. You fall down, you get back up, and you go again. Lou Hollander, oldest Iron Man finisher. I have been judged on what people think the kind of person I am by the way I dress my whole life. 
I didn't wear pants until seventh grade, just dresses and heels or patent leather shoes. And trust me, kids had a lot to say about that. It became either you love me or you hate me. When I met Nate, he was an assistant to an O-line coach at Chaminade Julian in Dayton, Ohio. I'd spent the year before in Thailand traveling and teaching English. I, I didn't plan to come back. I had promised my best friend I would come home for a year and Nate and I were both teachers at City Day Community School, a charter school. He taught PE and I taught first grade and my kids were terrified of him. <laughs> you could almost say when I met him it was love at first sight if you believe in that. I've experienced it so I do. <laughs> I dropped my class off to PE the first day and I felt those butterflies in my stomach. I ran down the stairs and called my best friend and I said, I think I just met somebody very important. We started to hang out and yes, I would make cookies before his football games on Fridays. He complains he doesn't get those cookies anymore. <laughs> I remember watching him run across the field and thinking there was something different and special about him. Two months into dating, he told me his aspirations of becoming a head coach and I and wondered if I could handle that. I thought, how hard can it be? It's just a job. I mean, you win some, you lose some. I mean, who's going to be mad if you lose? <laughs> See? <laughs> I went to a private school and we didn't have high school football at the time. So I didn't lead, live and breathe football. So I didn't grasp the concept of the game and really how much the game would change from 2005 until now, or how important Nate and I's partnership would be in the game of life. When Nate and I were at City Day, we started a basketball team. Neither one of us were really knew much about basketball. Actually, Nate played on a team with his um, coaches and they usually got kicked out of the games because they were football players, not basketball players. <laughs> but coaching that team to the one win of the season really sparked something in me. Seeing their faces when we won just that one game, loss after loss, had sparked something in them, like they could do something. And it inspired me to look for ways to help students find that spark. As Nate started working his way through his coaching career, I began working my way through mine. With a degree in journalism and early childhood education, I realized if Nate was going to be moving on, and be, I would have to be able to market myself also. I couldn't just be the coach's wife. So I returned to school and got a master's in school counseling from the University of Dayton and a master's in administration from the University of Cincinnati. Those combined two masters would be the key for me when we made our decision for Nate to be able to be, take the head coaching job at Maslin. Why, you may ask. Well, after immediately confirming that he was taking the job and I would be joining him in the fall of 2015, social media began. End quote. She's just getting a job because her husband. She isn't qualified. They just made up a job for her. Quote, who would hire her? She's such a diva. Quote, winning is great and all, but I heard rumors that the team GPA is the lowest that it's been since Becca Moore came to town. Then I made a mistake, well, to some people, of posting that I would be cheering for LaSalle in the state championship game of the fall of 2015 against Maslin Perry. The school, obviously, we had just left LaSalle, and our son, Eli, still adored them. The tweets and the memes intensify. Shout out to Becca Moore for being the most hated woman in Maslin. I got letters telling me uh, I know nothing about the backyard battle, traditionally the first game of the season, which has actually never happened since the fall of 2015. We have met Perry in the playoffs. Hashtag not welcome Coach Moore. Shocked by Becca Moore's lack of class. Question for Becca Moore, are you an educator or just a cheerleader? Then to put the nail in the coffin, the local newspaper wrote an opinion article to the title of, is Becca Moore the worst coach's wife in Stark County history? Along with my picture. As you can imagine, 
Neither Nate nor the superintendent at the time were very happy with me. When the superintendent called me into his office and said, what do you think you should do? I remember thinking, I'm not going to apologize for what I said. I'm not going to, I'm just gonna have to show who I really am. I remember looking at him and saying, I'm just gonna have to work harder and proves everyone wrong who thinks they know me. I have to have an identity outside of me and football. I have to go back to what I'm good at, helping kids find that spark, that motivation. I went home and I screenshotted every quote awful thing that was posted about me. I read it over and over again. I read it to our son Eli. And I continue to every time someone posted something negative or made a meme about me. I wanted Eli and Ella to begin to get, as they got older, to learn what people type, what the media says or pull out on social media is their opinion. It does not mean that is who you are. It does not define you. Because of this, I have seen resilience in my own children that I never expected to see. Ella is now 13 and she's dealt with girls making TikToks of her and saying terrible stuff about her and she's able to shrug it off. And Eli just listens to what people say about his dad and laughs. It was after this that things began to change for me. I was able to work with our athletic department and start wheelchair basketball. It was here that I would meet some of the most amazing student athletes. You guys hear about football but I learned that there's more than just football. For reference, to play wheelchair basketball, you could have two able-bodied athletes, and then you had a list of qualifications like spina bifida, dwarfism, traumatic brain injury. You didn't have to be wheelchair bound, but you could play the game. Fun fact, as I was working with our school physical therapist to get a list of students to talk to who would be eligible to be on the team, I met fourth grader at the time, Elena Mendenhall. I went to the door she was going out to for the bus wearing my signature stilettos and dress. I told her wheelchair basketball was going to be fun and she would be an excellent athlete. I later found out that she went home and told her mom that some crazy lady in heels was trying to get her to play basketball. <laughs> I would from then on be known as the crazy lady in heels. Elena is a senior this year and I've been her coach since fourth grade. Right. She is truly an example of what it means to be a tiger. Through sickness, surgeries, and setbacks, she has walked the war path that Coach Moore has described as tenacious and disciplined at all costs. Elena constantly reminds me why I want to work with kids and why I continue to look for programs to impact in school that will give every student a chance to find that spark. It was through wheelchair basketball that I was reminded how important being a student athlete is no matter your ability. Savannah, one of my wheelchair athletes and seated track athletes, said in an interview, when I put on that uniform and go out there, I feel like a tiger. I'm really representing Maslin. Her saying is stuck with me way past her graduation. Each year after football season, Coach Moore and I would meet and ask two players to be on the team. We've had players such as Seth Blankenship, Jaden Woods, Austin Brawley, Andrew Edwards, Zach Catrone, Terrence Keyes Jr., Zion Pfeiffer, and our son Eli Moore. See, we won zero games our first year. Each year we'd win more. Then in the 21-22 season, I had the privilege of coaching with one of Nate's former players and first year teacher and coach, Benito Salazar. Together, we were able to coach the team and beat a five-year undefeated Wooster team and become the state runner-ups in the Wheelchair Interscholastic Sports State Championship. My favorite thing about coaching wheelchair basketball was seeing our athletes improve and inspiring our teachers and administrators when we would scrimmage them. Our kids are tough. One of my favorite memories was running into Seth Blankenship a few years ago and him saying one of his favorite memories and most rewarding experiences in high school 
was being on the wheelchair basketball team. And of course, my competitive nature let Coach Moore know it was not football. <laughs> From wheelchair basketball to my love for all things track and field, we were blessed to be able to get chairs for our seated athletes to compete in throwing and rolling on the track. We've been able to take seated athletes every year since 2019, with the exception of the COVID season that was canceled. This will be my girl Elena's senior year. If you want to see a sight, come to senior night in the spring and you'll find me in my heels crying on the track. <laughs> in all those years of coaching her, I've never heard her once complain or tell me the workout was too hard or that she couldn't do it. Along with coaching the rollers, I've had the privilege of teaming up with Greg Corsell and we won the 2021 Ohio High School Junior High State Championship Boys Division with names such as Tyler Hackenbrack, Braylon Tolles, Mike Wright Jr., and Jalen Slaughter, Milo Lennox, and Jameer Gamble. And believe me, I reminded them when they won the state championship last year that they won with me first and I have the ring to prove it. <laughs> Winning the Boys State Championship in indoor last year in 23 was kind of icing on the cake. Just call me by my nickname given by former kick kicker, Vinnie Keller, the real Coach Moore. <laughs> this, year, <laughs> this year, we will add girls flag football, the first team in Stark County to have a girls team, and I get the privilege of being the head coach. I take pride in this because we continue to grow and an allow athletes with all abilities to have the opportunity to be a student athlete to learn how to walk the war path and learn how to deal with what life may throw them, whether you win or lose. Working with the community in Maslin and partnering with so many great people, we, and I don't say I, because it takes multiple people to be able to accomplish things, have been able to feed families weekly and send home snacks with 80 kids weekly with our Feed Kids First program. We've been able to bless families at Thanksgiving, Christmas with turkeys, meals, and presents. There's so much good in Maslin, so much this community prides itself in. That brings me to the saying that people who aren't from Maslin think about Maslin against the world, and they smirk. I moved here, and I didn't really understand it. I always looked at myself as Becca against the world, and I've been okay with it. But being part of Maslin gave me a new understanding of how people don't want to accept or respect each other's legacies and traditions. They would rather hate or dismiss success by calling out things such as paper champs or you've only won once. After the state championship win, a couple weeks later, you know, your life begins to get back to normal. My sister texts me and she says, call me when you get a minute, you're not gonna believe this. My, my sister Rachel is one of our biggest supporters I think she's been to every Mass and McKinley game since Nate's been coaching here. She comes to playoff games and brings the rest of the family. She owns this little beauty shop in New Lebanon, Ohio, population 4,000. She's a nail tech at her shop. So I called her and she told me one of her regular clients came in to get her nails done. She goes on to tell me her client asked her what she's doing this upcoming weekend. My sister said, Becca, I told her I'm headed up to Maslin because my nephew's graduating. The client responded, Oh, that demon city? <laughs> Rachel says, Becca, I was looking at her and was like, what do you mean? Her client began to explain, we played Maslin in the playoffs and they just ran that score up on us. By now I'm laughing and I'm thinking this cannot be happening. Rachel continued, so the client says, the coach's wife does some show. She like does a talk show host called Tiger Talk or something. She thinks she's so funny and only laughs at herself. She also walks on the sideline wearing some orange snowsuit like, look at me. Rachel interrupts her. You know that's my sister, right? <laughs> the head coach is my brother-in-law. The client looked at her and goes, she isn't your sister. She's blonde. Rachel just laughed and pulled up a picture of us together. It turns out the client was the mother-in-law of one of the coaches from Cincinnati Anderson, which we beat 55-7 in the state semifinals last year. I laughed as I hung up the phone. So it continues, and so it will always be. As Denzel Washington said, it's not about what you have or even what you've accomplished. 
It's about what you've done with those accomplishments. It's about who you've lifted up and who you've made better. People have this preconceived notion, these ideals about maybe myself and definitely about Maslin. They think they know, but they don't know. It was here before Nate and I arrived, and it will continue once we're gone. It will always be Maslin, Becca, against the world. Co. I'm her co-host on Tiger Talk and her co-author. You know, I can't believe you read those tweets that I sent. <laughs> I didn't know you. I've apologized a million times. I know. And you have to bring it up in front of everyone? I thought they would tell me. I said you were the second worst wife ever. Not, not the most. I'm just kidding. Um, so Becca and I got to write Maslin Against the World and we, um, can you guys hear me? I'm yeah. trying to. I'm trying to speak loud so we can, yeah. we've got a height thing here, you probably haven't noticed. Um, we host a show called Tiger Talk, where every week we have Coach Moore and two players on, and we ask Coach Moore questions, and sometimes he answers them. Yeah, it, those are like the exciting episodes, and we can actually get them to respond to us. And through last season, as we kept winning, I started to think, like, maybe there's a book in this season. And I was like, Becca, I think we're going to win the state championship. And she was like, no, we're not going to win. And um, is that, that, that what happened? No, no. What, what? I kept telling you we were going to win the state championship. Oh, is that the way it so was? So what happened when we won? What, what did I do? What was the first yeah, thing Yeah, so I did? that is true. She kept telling me all year, we're going to win the state championship. I grew up in Maslin. I have been going to the game since I was a little kid. I don't get into that winning the state championship thing, you know? I've, I've long let that go. Like, it was too much for me. So I kept telling Becca, it's not happening. So we, as I'm sure some of you might know, we won the state championship last year, seven to two against Hoven. <laughs> it was maybe the biggest moment of my life, and you know, I do have four kids. The Hoven win was bigger. And I'm like processing it, like it's it's ticking down, it's zero, 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 and we won, and I'm like in this fog, and I look down on the field, and here comes Becca running across the field saying, I told you so, I told you so, can I have a moment? So that started us on a book, and let's talk a little bit about the book. So the book was pretty ex um, exciting, and Probably some of you hear the biggest chapter that we wrote, which we, we kind of split up the book, but um, one of the chapters you guys would probably like is Maslin versus McKinley. So we interviewed the coaches, and you know a lot of our coaches have played for Maslin for so long. So it's really interesting um, reading what they had to say about the traditions. You know, I love coming to these lunches and hearing the stories about you know someone used to steal the dog every year and then have to go get it or. The Maslin was driving around without um, the bottom of the car and painting M's on the um, on the road in, in Canton. And the police couldn't figure out who was doing. You know, you couldn't do that now. But like, it's just exciting to hear some of the old timer stories talking about just the the rivalry and, and how much fun it was. So, and and then some of our coaches and the stories that they told was was very exciting. So that that's was we split that chapter up and. And we got to talk about what it's like to be the coach's wife versus being a fan. Um, so that was is, is exciting to write. Yeah, that's the first chapter is called Maslin from the in, outside. Mm -hmm. And that I write where I'm kind of bringing people in to what the town of Maslin is like. To, you know, everyone here knows how much it matters, but you want a book, in, someone in Iowa, Texas, whatever, Florida can read it. And so I sort of bring in people into the small town, and then Becca takes over at being masculine from the inside. And you get that from her speech. What you don't get from your speech is when you are doing things with Becca, at any time they could be canceled because a student calls her and needs cleats, or wants to run, or needs to go to the grocery store. And that is Becca's life. 
And I've been able to see that, and it's really made me understand that these are children playing this game on Saturday. You know, the children of Maslin are playing the children of McKinley. And I think as adults, we have to remember that. And when we're in the stands, those are just kids. They're going to make mistakes. Of course, we want our team to win. There might even be people here who want McKinley to win. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe not, guess not. But you you know, those are kids and we want to think about that. And I've really learned that in watching what Becca does for the kids and what Nate does. Yes, we want to win, but it's so much more important that they go to college and that they learn how to be good in this community because that's so important. And that's what we want. And and to me that's what Maslin Against the World, the book, becomes about. Like, yes, we went sixteen and oh and won. But what you learn from the coaches is they wanted those kids to be better. They wanted those kids to move on to a better place. And I think, I don't know, it's eye-opening for me. What was it like for you to, you know, your insight, but still we conducted like 16 interviews. I think um, even as a coach's wife, like I'm married to a head coach, so I think you don't realize how much time all the coaches put in to to everything. So that was what was eye-opening to me, even though I was married to Nate as an assistant coach. It's different, I think, Maslin and McKinley. Like, they, you, there's so much that goes goes into it that you forget about. And, and the week is ridiculous. So what we did for the book is we take you through what Becca and Nate have you to do. You couldn't keep up. No, I couldn't keep up. I mean, two days in, I was like, I cannot have any more rigatoni. <laughs> it's like, that's all they eat this week. It's one, it's, it's one banquet after another. And you go to the Canton Baptist Church in the morning, and there's a bonfire, there's a parade. And why am I not in the parade? I feel like I should have a float. There's not a tiger top float? This should happen. But it's, it's a crazy week, and I think that... The fact that they have to also coach this game and do all that is really impressive. The book is in the coach's words. It's an oral history, so it's not us saying what we think. It's really how they did something that hadn't happened for 53 years. Yeah. Do you have questions? Right. Hey, Rebecca, I Oh, Raleigh? Yeah, yeah. I, you know, this is unreal. You know, I, I, you know, Becca runs marathons all the time, and I go to the gym over at Fit For You in Maslin. Here comes Becca. I thought, who is this a good looking buddy? What's, and she's got three kids with her, and she's training at 9.30 at night. So I thought, man, this is just something unique. This is not going to happen. I got in there at different hours, and here she comes in with three kids she's training. And she runs marathons to boot. I mean, it's almost like an impossible situation. How she does it, I don't know. Where she finds the time, that's a mystery to me. <laughs> Thanks, Riley. <laughs> Well, it really started, um, he asked about how um, we, I started with the education with the kids. So it really started with the ACT, when ACT was important um, for the football players to get a certain score to match their GPA. But then it just became um, Nate and football kind of embraced, we want a 3.5, we want a 3.6, you know, they wanted these high GPAs. So we kind of worked with teachers and the principals, and then we also kind of had an open door policy that they could come to our house, and you know sometimes I would cook dinner, we'd order food, and they could work together and, and you know kind of sit there and do their work with each other, and then the teachers bought into that and they help them with time. They have like a tiger time or a time in school that they can go get help. So really, it started with that, and then buying into how important being a student athlete, student first is important um, to them and you know big mike wright is a perfect example of that because he has he's going to graduate early he's taking college classes and playing football and he's learned how to balance it um, so it's, it's pretty amazing to watch that 
you just get the buy-in from the kids and then less and less do you need to have that them over to your house because they're texting you they're screenshotting you their grades and sending them to you so it's 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 pretty it started with the act and now they just kind of bought into it so it's less and less that sometimes i have to do for them you know it's, it's just become a culture yeah Thank you so much. <laughs> what time is your Tiger Talk on? Is that on the Worcester High School uh, system, or is that on uh, 990? Or what That's time? a great question, Zolay. So um, we what tried to get, so the question was, where can you see Tiger Talk, and is it on 990? And we wanted to be on 990, <laughs> and Ray Jeske sent, um, people to my house to threaten me if we got on 990. I'm just kidding. We're up. I'm just teasing. Um, I, um, tough crowd. Uh, we're on YouTube. It's on every Tuesday. And you can just search for Tiger Talk Becca Moore. And we do, we really have a lot of fun. I live in Florida and I wanted to take the positivity of Maslin that doesn't really get coverage in the local media. We don't really have local media anymore. It's all owned outside. But I wanted something that people could understand that what Nate and Becca are doing with these kids. So we, we really try to talk to the kids, and we also fool around like nonstop. I mean, someday we're going to ask the football question on that show. Yeah, we don't ask We're going to, I mean, we, we're not there to like find out what the play is and, and ruin it for other people. We want to understand what is it like to be a Tiger for these kids that have this pressure on them, like a game on Saturday. I wouldn't want to go out on that field and have a town on my back. So that's what we do. It's a lot of fun. Check it out. It's on YouTube. It's called Tiger Talk, and I think you'll like it. We're filming it tonight, and we call this our Christmas episode because it's Christmas in Tiger Town this week, <laughs> and we're going to be wearing orange Santa hats. Pretty good. What is Wood. it? What is it released weekly? It comes out every Tuesday when I finish it. But we try to have it out by ten in the morning. Uh, but these stupid hurricanes are really knocking us out. It's causing us a little bit of trouble this year. The wheelchair basketball I talked about earlier is that uh, something statewide? Is it recognized by any coaching body? Is it growing? So the question is, is wheelchair basketball recognized statewide? It currently is not recognized by Ohio High School Athletic Association. It is um, interscholastic um, club ran through adaptive sports programs of Ohio, but the seated track and field is recognized by Ohio High School Athletic Association. So we actually compete with the able-bodied kids down, but you have to qualify just like those kids have to qualify. So there's certain times you have to roll or throw, you have to throw a certain certain length um, with flag football starting, um, girls flag football, that's probably a year or two away of being Ohio High School Athletic Association <coughs> sanctioned. So that's like it's why it's a big deal to get these programs started. So that, yes, it is, wheelchair basketball is growing, yes. A lot of people have talked about mass and recruiting, and when you guys oh, came yes. to drop Mumford with you, but, I, I've heard so much good about what you guys did with him. He would not be in the position he is today. Would you explain that? Okay, well, the question was explain Thayer Mumford. <laughs> so we did not bring Thayer Mumford with us. He was already here. Um, really, with, with, with Thayer, um, he lived in inner city. Um, Cincinnati, he had a single mom, his dad was in jail, his dad 
um, actually died um, in jail. So, it, Fair was not doing well, had been held at gunpoint, and his mom called me and was like, he's not gonna make it, he's, he's, he's not gonna make it. And so, um, we went through the proper channels and went down and talked to Ohio High School Athletic Association and, and went to court in Cincinnati. And Cincinnati granted us guardianship of Fair Mumford. Mom had to, or custody. Mom relinquished all her rights based on what a judge decided. And then you know the story. Obviously, we, you know, got sanctioned by Ohio High School Athletic Association, but. Kind of, not really, but um, you know, it was a settlement. And with Fair, I will say what happened with that is he taught us how to help others and open the door for the kids in Maslin for us to be more open to what they were going through off the field. So what that did was make us more aware of how more involved we need to be and our coaches need to be with building a relationship with kids. And I think that that's the, the biggest, biggest thing that we learned from that. And he plays for the Raiders and is doing well. So Becca and I will be back for our signing books. We'll we're going to take one more, but we want to let you know that we're going to be here signing books and selling them. And then also, we get yellow jackets and bus. We got inducted into the Hall of Fame today, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, back there, we yeah. get there? Okay. Since you guys are open enrollment, can you open at school and McKinley isn't open enrollment, has that helped your all your sports programs to get really good players all over the state of Ohio and all over the country. <laughs> He's asking about open enrollment. So I will tell you as a coach, I recruit my own kids that are in walking the halls of Maslin. So I went around and recruited all my wheelchair kids that were in Maslin. I don't know anything about, about open enrollment. I do my job as special ed and, and, and as a coach. So I think that's a Paul Salvino question. Thanks for coming and speaking to us this week. I know it's a tough week. My question is Iron Man. That's a five miles swimming, and then what is it? 100 miles biking, and then. Okay, so this miles. question is how far is an Iron Man? So it's 2.4 mile swim, 112 mile bike, and then a 26.2 marathon afterwards. And you have a limit of 17 hours, and I did it in 11 hours. And